Hi, welcome to Creative Money Bird Podcast. My name is Damien Dyer Johnson. Today I'll be talking about collaborations. And before I start, I would like to say, if you're listening for the first time, if you've not liked, shared, or followed, or subscribed in whichever platform you're listening from, I'd like to implore you to do so. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your comments as well. And on today's episode, I'm focused on collaborations. Collaborations in two tiers. I would like to say in two tiers because there are different forms of collaborations that creatives usually um, embark upon. The first collaboration type would be the collaboration between creatives. This, I think, is extremely common and most people would understand this, especially when you are not um, new in, in any industry that you're in. As long as you're a creative, you would have been able to work with other creatives to achieve a certain goal. This could have money or monetary gain attached to it or not. And this form of collaboration is sort of easy because you know that, okay, everyone is trying to move their career forward or trying to do something to at least maybe give their portfolio some form of good work. This form of collaboration, I think, is beneficial, but sometimes it's not the only form of collaboration that exists. And many people think of collaboration, especially when they're creatives, they think of collaboration just in this form of like, okay, I'm going to look for, let me use a, a photographer, for example. So a fashion photographer would say, okay, I'm looking for a stylist to work with. I'm looking for a model. I'm looking for a makeup artist and the likes of people in that field. And then saying, okay, I want to collaborate. They send the ideas, they share. This is great. I think this for collaboration would help you to build like a very strong um, sense of your style also be able to find other creatives to be able to work with, find like-minded people, learn. And this is extremely good. But this is not the form, only form of collaboration. And I think most times, at least from my own experience, I do not think this is the only form of collaboration that you should be doing. I think another form of collaboration would be considering yourself, if you're a freelancer, you have a production um, unit set up, I think you should be able to reach out to other people who are not sort of like collaborators in the regular way so look for say brands who you would naturally would work for this is the second form of collaboration that i'm looking at and that's the major collaboration i will be thought uh, i will be thinking through and talking through today so i'd like to first of all think through this because um i know that there are a lot of people who have had negative experiences with collaborating with other people even with collaborating with our creative there are people who have had negative experiences as well. I have my own fair share of stories and I know that other people will have theirs as well. So I do not feel like um, because of negative situations that we should all look at collaborations as something that I do not need. And I'm saying this from experience and knowing that other people have been reached out to and say, oh, I'd like to collaborate with you. And it seemed like oh, it was not a win situation for them. They felt like they gained nothing from the collaboration. And then they just look at people collaborating with brands as something that they would never do. So a very simple example is say a brand, I don't know what the brand could be selling or making or what service they could be offering. So they reach out to a creative and say, oh, we like your work, we've seen your work and uh, we would like to collaborate with you. When most creatives hear this scenario I've given, they've heard this, they've come across this before. And most times it's in terms of what the brand that reached out to you is going to benefit rather than what the creative is going to gain out of this. And I know that many brands will say, okay, we are going to give you A, B, and C, but most times the A, B, and C is not enough. An example is they reach out and say, oh, we cannot pay for your services. However, we are hoping to offer you exposure. And this is the the most common thing that everyone offers, but many, at least many, many brands that reach out to creative, this is what they offer. They offer you and say, okay, we would offer you exposure. We have X, Y, and Z amount of followers and we believe that um, your work being seen by our followers and even other people will benefit you. This isn't essentially a bad thing at all. However, that might not be exactly what some creatives need. And I think that many times when someone reaches out to you, if they cater to your needs, you would consider the collaboration as a beneficial thing Rather, even if there was not any form of monetary um, gain that's going to be involved in the collaboration. So the example is someone reaches out to me and says, oh, I want to give you um, 
I don't know, uh, we're going to process your travel, we're going to process you getting A, B, and C. And those are the things I actually want and those things are goals for me. I think that would be better sometimes than even a monetary collaboration. In most cases, many people actually reach out for collaborations because they have no money to pay. And I think that that's the wrongest ways for maybe brands in this case to approach reaching out to creatives for collaborations. However, I'm not really concerned about brands because maybe I'll say I'm not a brand. I'm trying to look at how creatives can actually work with brands that they want to work with or work on projects that they want to work on, but reaching out and considering it as collaborations. So in this case, an example that I would give is in my own work, I like to document stories. I like to document things that people would resonate with in one way or the other. This applies to many other fields. If you are a visual creative, say a photographer, for example, or if you're an audio creative, so like you create sounds and stuff like that, or you are an editor. So these are things that you can sort of implement in the kind of work that you do. This doesn't exactly apply to everybody, but um, I feel like everyone can take notes from the things that I would say. The scenario I would give is I, for example, love to do um, pro bono work for nonprofit organizations. So if I'm reaching out to a nonprofit in this case, it's because I already know that I'm not thinking about the money and I just want to create the work that I want to create. That work is more important to me than what um, the amount of money they're going to pay. So an example would be, I can look for a nonprofit that is specialized or that their core focus is child education. If this is something that I want to um, work on, I'm supposed to think about how I'm going to approach them first. Say, look for an issue, knowing that this issue was align with their goals, their objectives as an organization or as an, a non-profit organization in this case. Now, once I've found that issue and I've thought through, okay, how am I going to tell that story for myself and how is that story in my in the way I want to tell it, how is it going to benefit this non-profit organization? If I figure this out, then I can then reach out to them. Now, sort of with like a proposal with a deck that explains the issue and explains how it benefits them. Now, in this case, when I'm reaching out, I'm not supposed to think about what benefits me because I know that at the back of my mind, that, okay, this is what is going to benefit me if I do this. And when I reach out to them, I say, okay, this is the issue. These are the things I think would help. So, for example, many nonprofits want to raise funds so that they can um, use the funds to do certain things, say, uh, pay for people's education, like in the case I just gave as the example, pay for library buildings, things like that. If that's my goal, then I'll reach out to them and say, okay, this is how I see this certain issue and I feel like your organization would benefit from a story that is told a certain way, considering these emotions that you're trying to appeal to, because at the end of the day, when you're trying to fundraise for nonprofits, you're trying to appeal to a certain emotion from people who are going to leave or donate their funds to that cause. So if I can check all these boxes with that organization, I feel like in most cases, and they knowing that there is no financial obligation involved, they will be inclined to say, okay, we will go with you on this. And they can say, well, maybe we'll have a meeting and then maybe you can even ha put forth more clarity if you have questions and things like that. Now, this form of collaboration is I'm um, painted an ideal situation and this is a non-profit. I'm not hoping to get paid if they come and come around and say, okay, we would like to do the collaboration with you. Um, in this case, the goal for me would be um, maybe in the future when this collaboration is over, they already know you as a creative person and they want to, they would definitely want to work with you again. Now, this is not like a guarantee and it's not an assurance that they're going to want to work with you. But because you've um, put your best foot forward into those projects, it's a highly likely that when they have something and is actually funding to do something, they would be able to reach out to you and say, okay, we'd like to work with you on this. And maybe in that case, they should actually consider now that, okay, you're going to do it with a monetary attachment to the situation now. Another situation or another way I look at it in terms of benefit is there are other non-profit organizations 
this no other non-profit organizations can see the work you've done for this organization. They don't know how you reached out to them. They don't know whether they paid you or not. So if you reach out to one and you've worked for one and the work is extremely good, then in the next situation, when someone else is reaching out, they will be reaching out with the knowledge that, oh, this person did extremely good work. They were able to raise X, Y, Z in terms of funds for this organization. We would like you to do the same thing for us. And in that case, if my goal was to be able to get people with non-profits, now I have my foot in the door in this situation. However, that's, like I said earlier, that's like an ideal, like an ideal, ideal situation. This is not always the case in many situations. Many people are not living in places where even non-profit exists to start with. However, you can look at it in another way. The second example I will give is reaching out to someone who has a brand, collaborating with one person so if i was i am a freelancer for example and i'm trying to reach out to a young person like me who has a brand and this there's a unique perspective that i have found by studying their brand and i see that okay if i collaborate with this person we can tell a unique story that would make a lot of sense in this situation i'll reach out to the person and say okay i've seen your brand i've seen maybe what your goals are as a brand and I think that I can help you tell a story that would appeal to your, say, target audience in this case. Now, this is not um, lock in stone. The method might not be the same, but the framework should be the same. Because when I reach out to someone, I'm looking at, okay, I'm trying to help you achieve your goals, get you to a point where um, ordinarily on your own, it would be hard for you or it's going to cost you so much money to sort of achieve. But in this case, I'm not coming forth with the money. I'm not saying, okay, pay me A, B, C, and D to be able to achieve this for you. I'm saying, okay, I will come and we'll work together on this. So there are different ways to approach this. So I would list out some things that I think um, are important to help maybe secure a collaboration that will be beneficial to you and beneficial to the person that you're going to reach out to. The first thing I would say is identify shared interest. If I know that this person that I'm reaching out to who has a brand is going to be interested in a certain type of visuals, if I'm a visual creative person, like I'm a filmmaker and I know that, okay, I can create a style of video that this person would like. I'm supposed to create a deck or a um, proposal, send it to the person and saying, oh, I've seen your style. I know you would like the style and I'll send samples or even if they don't have that style yet and that is where I'm coming in and say, okay, I believe that this style would benefit you. I will show them examples of that and say, okay, this is how it's going to benefit you. And if that's something that I've always wanted to create and I've never had the chance to create, that's my opportunity to do that. That's the first thing is that I would identify something that is a shared interest between both of us. So it's like, okay, I want to be able to work with um, brands, people that have maybe black owned businesses now and tell a story a certain way. Or I'm trying to look for um, startups that sort of are in a struggling market but could be doing better. Um, if I was a person who, I mean, a field where it doesn't seem like there's more traction as well, that's sort of like a shared interest and I can sort of understand where they are coming from. The identifying what would be a shared interest between two brands is the first step or two people in this case would be the first step before you even reach out, note these things down and sort of highlight to within the proposal or whatever you're going to send to that brand for collaboration. The second thing would be to sort of do more research and find out about what goals, what the um, ideals of the person or the brand that you're going to collaborate with is. It's not just enough to go and see their mission, their vision and things like this, that to look at their track record, to look like, okay, in the past year, what have they been trying to do? If I can figure that out, I know that, okay, this is how I can best serve these people when I'm going into this collaboration. These are the things that I see that they do not currently have or they've been trying to do, but they have not been able to achieve with their work up to this point that my work can sort of bring to them. If I can identify this, then I'm sort of like crossing every hurdle in terms of the barrier that would make them um, be up for that, not be up for that collaboration in this case. The next thing I want to do after this would be to reach out to that brand and share your goals or the vision that you have with them. 
Now, sharing that vision is putting them sort of like in forefront. An example would be if I know the person who owns the brand, in this case, if it says a very small brand and I know the person who owns the brand, I can definitely just reach out to the owner of the brand and say, hi, my name is X, Y, and Z. I've seen your work on your brand. Maybe they have a separate brand page and say, okay, I have seen your work and I'm fascinated by what you do. I like your work. In this case, just reach out and explain why you want to work with them. After reaching out and talking to the brand owner and telling them what aspects you like about their work, sharing their, your vision with them and how maybe your inputs can help improve a certain aspect of your work. I think that's the ending point for like sort of like a step one process because it's a two-step process. So after all of this and saying, okay, I would like to share a document with you highlighting what I think we can do together, how I can bring X and Y to the table, how that can as well help you achieve your goals, your aim, your objective as an organization or for your organization in this case. So after this has been shared, that's the end of step one, because then you share the proposal with the person, share documents with the person, the person has seen everything. In this, you can document what you want to do. If you're a visual creative, document a visual style of what you're trying to create for them or collaborate with them on. Now let the person then say, okay, I've seen what you sent me or I like what this will be about. Now, because the reason why you have to wait is that sometimes people might not have exactly the same. You might just go online, research and think that these are things that this person would like to achieve. The person is supposed to reach out and say, okay, I like exactly what you sent. Then we go ahead. Or sometimes, oh, I like what you sent, but I would like us to tweak one, two, and three. And this is the point where I think many people would be like, oh, this person is changing the idea of what I, my entire idea in the first place. To me, this is very counterproductive because if you reach out to someone and say, well, I'd like to work with you, not work, not you working for them or them working for you. It's like we're trying to work together to achieve a certain goal. If they sort of tweak your idea, even if it's just a little, or even if it's, unless they are completely changing your idea, they're trying not to do your own idea and try to do their own idea. I think you should be able to leave the gap or the space for them to be able to have their own input in the entire thing because if they don't have any input at all it's not really a collaboration you're just working for them for free and maybe just trying to use that to achieve your own goal it's a collaboration because they bring something to the table and you as well bring something to the table unless you have thought about it through and through and from their own perspective as well you have all grounds covered they don't need to change anything but once they see something maybe that you missed and they are trying to put that into the project, I think there should be that space for that as well. After all of this, if both parties have agreed to what you're doing and where the goal should be heading towards and everything, the next thing is to share what the responsibilities will be. This is what I expect from you. This is what you are going to do. These are the things that you are going to be providing. The same thing on the other side. There's going to be sort of like a synergy and they know that, okay, these are things I need to fulfill as well as these are the things that you need to fulfill. This is a point where, for example, in the example I gave earlier, if I was the one who was trying to tell a certain type of story, they understand that story. Maybe they have to provide the subject for that story. In the case of the nonprofit that I talked about earlier, the decision will be that they, maybe they will look for a child whose situation is quite peculiar that would resonate with the people that they are trying to speak to to get funds for the cause that they're trying to get the funds for. In the situation of the business owner, maybe you are trying to document a certain thing that the business does and as they do exceptionally well. And so they will as well provide a subject for that. Sometimes that would not be my own place, but it depends on the way the entire collaboration is going to be considered. If we've considered the collaboration or if I have considered the collaboration, I've sent to them and say, okay, this is someone I think we should work with um, based on what we talked about, then I think as well, you can as well go ahead and maybe work with that person. Or if they suggest and say, well, we have a better person or we think the story will be best told in this direction. I think that's another way to look at the entire thing. After we've sort of talked about our subject, talked about everything that we're trying to do, we've sort of said, okay, we are starting this project at 
this time it should take maybe three weeks, four weeks, one week, one day. We've sort of put all our expectations together and we sort of started, we've put our responsibility and says, you are the one taking responsibility in this way and I am taking this responsibility. After we've defined all that, we start work, we collaborate now in the actual sense and work together towards that goal. They already know the expectation, they know what I'm giving them. So maybe what I'm going to give them, if I was a visual person, like a photographer, for example, is like I'm providing stories and they are writing um, the words that they need to put behind those stories. I'm photographing people in certain situations, in certain scenarios, in a certain style that is my style. Then they go ahead and then they put words behind that and then they do their due diligence to promoting that or I would be the one if that's the kind of collaboration I was hoping for. You know, that's usually if it was a business I was trying to work with and I wanted to create videos for them. So how many videos am I willing to put out for them? So am I hoping to put out a long form content, sort of like a documentary uh, style video for them, say 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes? And then um, am I giving them short videos, vertical styled videos, or just form, short form videos that are going to be meant for social media for them to as well pass the message on that platform as well. All of these are things that need to be communicated. And once there, that is done, we execute and then everybody moves ahead. In all these examples I've given, I feel like the best way for creatives to be able to leverage on their collaboration is to be able to speak the language of the people that are in that same sphere. Once the whole collaboration is taught out, I must be thinking of like, okay, I'm using this to sort of do be a portfolio work for my next client. I'm using this as sort of like a way to speak to the next potential person that's going to reach out to me and for them to see my vision, for them to see my style of work, for them to see my storytelling, different things like that. So I must make sure that all of this is covered within the collaboration. Once this is well covered, to me, that's the crux of the collaboration because that's going to make sure that I have the benefits of the collaboration in the first place. As I is helping the NGO raise money or helping the business person tell their story better, maybe to even larger audience, these are things that would be extremely beneficial, not just to them, but as well to me. I know that I've seen someone who created a documentary piece for a non-governmental organization and the filmmaker was able to use that film itself, pitch the film to other people to get more work. And then even the film had so much impact that they could submit to different film festivals, give them accolades, which would be something that would be beneficial to them because then they can use that and say, oh, I have X, Y, Z awards. Um, these are the recognitions I've gotten. And that maybe helps them subsequently in other things that they're going to do as well. I know that many people have a very negative connotation of what collaboration means. Many times, many people approach collaborations or reach out to creatives and say, I want to collaborate with you and all that they are offering is exposure. I think that's why many people have sort of like a negative way of looking at collaborations. But if you as well are trying to collaborate with other people, you need to think of what you're bringing to the table. If you know that these are the things that this person would value, then make sure that you can check those boxes for them. It's not all about money. Sometimes the reason why people who are promised exposure do not see it as valuable is that the exposure does not lead to money for them. If some form of exposure would lead to money, and I'm sure that, oh, this exposure would be valuable in the monetary sense to me, definitely people would do that. And there are certain groups of people that would definitely take the exposure over money. I've seen a video director, I think he directed music for a K-pop group, for example, and then he said that, oh, if he had known, he would have just signed, he wouldn't have even got him paid for that project. He would have asked them for the back-end benefits that they would get, say, um, whatever YouTube pays you, I want, I don't know, 50% of that rather than the amount he was paid because the video got a very, very large number of views. And then he felt like, okay, I, I would have made more money that way rather than being paid up front. So that in that situation, I feel like exposure um, was more benefit beneficial for him. And then he, there was even money at the end of the, of the exposure in that case for him. So things like that are things I think that creatives should look at. And you know that many people are used to collaborating with themselves as creatives, but 
I think we should start looking outside our own sphere of influence. That's collaborating with other creatives in our field to say, how can I collaborate with another person that is in another field? How can I bring my storytelling, my expertise into their own field to benefit them? And how can I uh, benefit from them as well? Because that is what it is like a two-way street. So I feel like these are the things that we all need to consider. Um, if you have any questions on this, maybe some of the things I said do not directly apply to your creative field. Maybe I can help you put more clarity to it. You can send in questions, send in a DM, or even on the platforms that you're listening, if you put a comment there, I'll be able to respond to that. Thank you for listening. If you made it this far, thank you very much. And I hope to hear from you. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, follow, depending on the platform that you're on. Um, we'd love your interaction and then I hope to see you in two weeks time.